Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about what makes DMART such a special company. Why does the investor community love it a lot? What made the stock go from something like 300 rupees around the IPO uh, price all the way up to 4000 rupees today in just a span of about five years? And how does DMART actually end up being profitable in a business where most other competitors end up making losses? To understand that, let's first start with a basic crux of you know the retail business. If you think about the retail business, at its heart it is very similar to a trading business. You're basically taking somebody else's product, putting it on your shelf and then selling it out to a customer. The broad context of how this business works is very very similar to you know how does a trading company operate in that context. So let's first understand where does DMART operate, what does it sell and then we look at some of the specific tenets of what makes it so special. If you see this image which has been sourced from DMART's annual report, uh, in FY21 DMART had close to about 230 odd stores. Primarily and predominantly most of them were in the western, central and southern regions of India. They are very strong in certain states like Maharashtra and Gujarat followed by Telangana, Karnataka and then other states they are just kind of putting up their presence at, as we speak. It took DMART close to about 8 years to open the first 10 stores they did. And then once they kind of figured out what works in this segment, they started accelerating the store opening process. Very clearly, they kind of wanted to go slow initially to understand what is it that the customer wants. And once they have what the customer wants, once they can give what the customer wants in a way the customer wants, they decided to expand significantly faster. The image also kind of gives us an idea about you know what kind of opportunity lies because they're not there in the north and east part of India, which automatically gives them a scope of growth as we go along. What do they sell? Their segments predominantly would be foods, non-foods FMCG and general apparel and merchandise. If we look at the data and it's better to look at FY20 data here because FY21 data which was available that's been distorted a little bit because of the lockdown and all right. In the lockdown they were not sort of allowed to sell non-essential items. So the proportion of essentials like foods went up in that year but if we go back to FY20, roughly about 50% of their business used to come from the food segment, close to about 20% from the non-food segment and about 27% from the general merchandise and apparel segment. That was the breakup of what their business was. Now let's try and understand what is it that makes a retail business good or not so good. So there are some key drivers that you would want to think about in a retail business. The first and most important parameter in any retail business is how well do you manage your inventory? How quickly can you turn your inventory over? How fast can you sell the product that you're selling? Think about it. You buy somebody else's product for 100 rupees and you sell it at its MRP of let's say 105 rupees. You're only going to make that margin of 5 rupees. That's your gross margin. The only way you can expand this business is by selling it again and again as fast as possible. So how quickly can you offload your inventory becomes one of the most critical components of how a retail business is viewed by investors and how a retail business performs over a period of time. The next bit that you want to look when you look at efficiency of a company is how much can you actually sell given a certain amount of space. If you think about it, retail business doesn't necessarily have any raw material of their own. For them, the space that they're using is the core you know input that is going into the business and the more revenue they can make out of a certain amount of space the better it is so revenue per square foot becomes an important metric like for like growth what does like for like growth mean growth in stores that have been operational for a couple of years at least because it takes about two years for a store to stabilize so even in other companies that run stores you would typically look at something called as same store sales growth or like for like growth. This is used for stores that have been in operational for a couple of years at least. You want to look at that growth because the new stores may take some time to stabilize. The final point is bill cuts. This is nothing but the number of customers who have purchased something. So every customer bill is counted here. Given this data and DMART actually gives most of this data in their investor communication. Given this data, we can come up with other metrics to ascertain what is so good about this business. Right? So let's try and understand some of that. We have some data that is picked up from DMART for the last four years from their annual reports that are available for the previous four years. And we've listed that data down and then are some calculations at the bottom of this table which kind of give us an insight into how DMART works and what is so good about DMART. 
right at the top you see the number of stores so every year what kind of stores at the end of the year the company had you look at area in million square feet so how much is the area that is operational right at the end of that particular period we have details of the bills cut in crores so 20 crore bills were cut in 2020 2021 was lower look at this data in the context of the pandemic that the 2020 year was impacted by the pandemic so some of the numbers got distorted in that year if you look at the revenue of the company it was about 15000 crore in 2018 within 2 years that 15000 crore became 25000 crore approximately right and then there are some data points about inventories and payable inventory and payable details that are available for each of these each of these years if you look at some of these parameters and then we can use these parameters to calculate some metrics for the for the company so look at area per store which is nothing but i have taken the total area and divided by the number of stores Right. So if you divide that area per store in square feet would work out to about 37,000 square feet. You'll note an increasing trend here, which means they're adding stores which are larger now. So the stores that the newer stores are being added, they are larger. In fact, they have communicated that the new stores they will be adding would be close to 50 to 60,000 square feet in size. Right. Bills cut per store per day. You take the store uh, number of bills cut, you divide it by the number of stores per day. So roughly about, you know, every store is cutting on a daily basis, approximately about 2,500 odd bills. And this number fell in 2021, but that was because again, the lockdown impact kind of came in as well as, uh, you know, if you can use the revenue number and divide it by the number of bills cut, you can get revenue per bill cut, which is here. You'll note this number went up from 1100 rupees per bill on average in 2018, all the way up to 1228 per bill in 2020. So there's a reasonable growth that is happening there. 2021 was a spike because while the number of bills went down, average purchase per bill went up. Logical because in the pandemic scenario, people were visiting the stores less often, but whenever they were visiting, they were purchasing more just to kind of keep it at their home, just in case the lockdown continues or, you know, stuff like that materializes. So I think that was an abnormal trend. It'll go back to normal trends after the uh, pandemic effect wears out in general. But if you look at some of these things, revenue growth was remarkably good. Per store growth was very good. Revenue per square foot, if you note this number, is about 30,000 rupees, right? Approximately 30, 31,000 rupees is the revenue per square foot. For any retail firm that operates in this business, DMART's number is nearly twice as much. Koi bhi or retail player itna revenue per square foot generate nahi karta hai India mein jitna DMART karta hai in the specific space of groceries and FMCG that uh, DMART is able to. Very clearly, that's an impact of how quickly you can turn your inventory. If you look at the inventory data and we convert it into inventory days, what does inventory day mean? Essentially, if I divide my revenue into daily sales, how many days of sales will equate to my inventory, right? So that number works out to 28 days. Effectively, what it means is that you are offloading your entire inventory in 28 days you, you know and you look at the years between 2018 and 20 it is remarkably stable four weeks is when your inventory gets offloaded if your inventory gets offloaded in four weeks you will do it about 13 times a year which means 13 times a year you are going to buy that product at 100 sell at 105 and make that margin the more number of times you can do it the better it is 13 is actually quite good if you can revolve your in inventory, you know, turn your inventory 13 times in the year. All of this data points out to some interesting tidbits about, you know, what the company is doing, what the company can do, right? Let's understand what makes it so special, right? What gives it the market cap it, is, uh, it has? And while I wouldn't go and comment on its valuation as such, let's try and understand why is it getting that premium? The first point you want to look at is the opportunity size. DMART operates about 250 stores in India with an area of about 8.8 .8 million square feet. If you look at the square foot area for DMART, that's close to about 8.8 .8 million square feet, right? If you look at parallel companies across the world, there are companies who would operate at a significantly larger size and scale, right? One example would be something like a Costco. Costco's area in million square feet would be about 119 million square feet. That's close to about 15 times the size of uh, of DMART approximately, right? The revenue in US dollar million is about 192,000. 
and uh, revenue per square foot in INR equivalent is greater than you know 1.2 lakhs. Now of course that can't be replicated in the context of India but you think about it a DMART which is predominantly spread in western central and southern India could pretty easily take the number of stores up to about you know 800 to 1000. Each of those stores on average could have a square foot area of close to about you know 40,000 50,000 square foot that could be there. So in total if you look at the total area that could be available for somebody like DMART could very easily be you know north of 25 30 million square feet in the next decade or so they can very quickly in fact last three years they've sort of close to doubled in the next decade they could do that again and again now they know what's really happening and they are actually profitable in that context right one there's a huge opportunity that is available a company like DMART can easily operate close to you know 40 million square feet in a place like India with a revenue per square foot that is available that would touch somewhere close to 40,000 rupees at some point of time, right? Now, if you look at 40 million square foot and 40,000 uh, rupees per square foot as revenue coming out, that number in itself would be about six times the size of their revenue today. So there is a huge scope of growth that can exist there. With this, DMART is also profitable. So the whole factor of profitability adds a big advantage to them. For every 100 rupees of sales, their final profit is somewhere to the tune of 5 rupees. Right? If they're able to generate 1 lakh crore of sales, their profit would be about 5,000 crore. If they're able to generate 1.5 lakh crore of sales, which is what we are saying they might be in a decade from now, or it, you know, surely should be doing that in a decade from now, their profit would be about 7,500 crore rupees then it starts making sense in terms of you know there's a very long ropeway of growth that the company has there's huge opportunity size that exists and this is a company that in you know 7 to 10 years from now could be looking at 5000 to 7000 crore of profits every year stable business model and the icing on the cake is their inventory management when you are able to keep your inventory so stable that it is like 4 weeks every year at any point of time, four weeks of sales worth of inventory at any given point of time, it tells us something specific about this company. The company knows the customer, the company knows what the customer purchases, when the customer purchases, and that's the holy grail of the retail business. DMART is the boss in this, and that is one of the core reasons why you see investors really like this stock why you see this is a company that has a proven business model that understands the business model very clearly and why people really look at this as one of the best managed companies in India. A quick disclaimer here, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell the stock. This is just an idea to try and understand what really works in the retail business and when you're evaluating a company like DMART, what are some of the core parameters you should be looking at. That's it from me in this video. Thank you.